This video is going to show how we can trace between requirements, but also trace from the requirements down to the, the source code. What we're going to see is a number of different levels of requirements. So system level requirements, tracing down to high level requirements that are going to trace down to low level requirements and from the lower requirements down to the source code. And what we want to ensure is that every low level, every high level requirement has been implemented. But also we want to be able to look and understand, well, why is this function here? And we want to be able to have this upstream traceability to a low level requirement, then up to high level requirements, all the way to our system level requirements. Now, the starting point here is that we have a, a project and inside that project, I have, of course, some, some source code, some C code in this particular case. And I also have a number of requirements. I have the requirements in various different uh, tools. But what I'm going to demonstrate today is the requirements in Word and Excel. So let's take a look at these documents. Let's start with our system level requirements. And in this particular case, these are in Word. And what we're going to see is we've used styles in order to be able to identify the various uh, information that we want to import. So as we can see, we have requirement ID, requirement text, making it very easy to pass this document and import the various requirements. That's the first document. Then we have the high level requirements. Again, these have been done in this case in Word. And once again, if we take a look at the styles, we can see we have a new style and this time it's traceability data. And this is giving us the upstream traceability to the appropriate system level requirement. The final level of requirements is in Excel. And if we take a look here, we can see very clearly we have a number of columns with our requirement ID, a name for the requirement, the body or description, and then we have a reference up to what high level requirement these low level requirements uh, satisfy. And then finally, we have an additional field, which I've called reference. I could have called that source code mapping because it's effectively is, well, what function needs to be created in order to be able to, to satisfy this low level requirement. So let's go and actually import these into our tool here, which is TB Manager. And inside TB Manager, we can see we've laid out the structure of system level requirements and then the high level requirements tracing to those system level requirements, the low level requirements tracing to the high level requirements and out of scope for this video at the moment, but we have low level tests and high level tests. So I could very simply right click on here and import from various different tools. But in this case, we have our requirements in Word and Excel. So let's go and find our system level requirement and let's go and import from that document. Let me just maximize this. And what we have is we have two rules. The first rule is for the requirement ID style. The second is the requirement text style. And we've got some very simple regular expressions allowing us in order to be able to pass that and find our requirements. And there we can see we've found six requirements. So let's import these into TV Manager. And now we can see we have these six system level requirements. Well, let's go and drag those onto this particular view. And there we've got our system level requirements. Now let's bring in the next level, which is the high level requirements. So I'm going to go back to this view. There we have our high level requirements. Let's go and import these. Once again, I'm just going to maximize the screen here. In this case, we have three rules. And this time, the third rule is using the style traceability data and a regular expression in order to be able to extract the, the reference. And if we preview this, we're going to be able to see it finds all these high level requirements. And this time we have a link up to the system level requirement. So once again, let's import this into the tool and it's found the links. And so it's nested the appropriate high level requirements underneath the system level requirement. Let's go back to our relationships view. And this time we can see, well, why is this system high level requirement here? And we can see it traces 
up to this system level requirement. If I clicked on the system level requirement, we can see the downstream traceability to our high level requirements. Now let's go to the low level requirements. So once again, we'll find the appropriate document. This time it's an Excel document. Let's go and take a look at, see how this has been mapped. And here we can see we're mapping each column to the requirement number, requirement name. We're taking this field here, which is our source code mapping, and we're mapping that to something called reference. So let's go and import this. Let's do a preview first. There we can see we have the reference. So this is implying that this is the function that is going to effectively need to be created and mapped to this lower level requirements here. OK, let's import that. And once again, we can see it's importing these requirements. And then afterwards, you can, it's nested it underneath the appropriate high level requirement. So if we go back to our relationships view, we can now see why is this particular low level requirement here? We have the upstream traceability and also we have the, the downstream traceability. So finally, let's go to the, the source code. And if I go to the source code view here, we can see we have all the various functions and I can perform the, the mapping simply by dragging and dropping the function onto the low level requirement. If I now go back to my relationships view, we can see why is this function here? And we can see it traces very clearly to a low level requirement, up to a high level requirement, all the way to our system level requirement. Well, that's just one function. I could do the same for all the functions, but if we go to our requirement grid, we're going to be able to see we've actually imported the requirements with that information about what function needs to be mapped to the low level requirement. So we can automate this mapping. To do so, we need to first of all, go and export the source description. And then we need to export the project we've done so far. And we're going to export this into what we call a, a TBM spec file. It's just an XML file. And I'm going to replace that. And then what we need to do is we need to run a Python script. So I have a Python script here that's going to generate the mapping information between the low level requirements and the actual procedure that we need to map to that low level requirement. So that's been automated. And so now I'm going to be able to go and import that file we've just created. So let's import the mapping.tbm spec. This now contains this mapping information. So I'm going to go and import that and what we're now going to see if we go to the relationships view is we have all the mapping between the low level requirements and the source code. So what I could do is I could say, well, let's highlight all the low level requirements. So let's just go and control A and select them. And instantly we can see we have two issues. The first issue is we have some code here that doesn't trace to any low level requirement. So in this particular case, we're, we're missing a low level requirement, but it could also mean that we have additional functionality that shouldn't be there. Also, we're able to see that for a couple, two of these particular functions, there is no low level uh, associated requirement. So effectively, this is more serious. We're missing functionality. Well, that I could also have seen by going to this particular view and saying, I want to see the traceability between my high level requirements and my low level requirements. So I can simply right click on here and I can generate a traceability matrix to, in this particular case, the low level requirements. And here I've got an HTML document and I can see very clearly the coverage that I've obtained and highlighted in red. We can see we have these two high level requirements that are not covered by any low level requirements. I could also see the same information here inside a, a traceability matrix. And again, color coded in red here to show the two high level requirements that have no mapping to any low level requirements. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a good overview of how we can trace requirements all the way down to the source code. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to, to contact us at LDRay. Thank you.